All right, hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're talking about the updated guide on how to connect your PS4 controller to your PC via Bluetooth. And we'll need your controller, some software, and a safety pin or a paperclip or a long pointy pen of some kind so that we can reset this. Uh, so what we're going to do is first we're going to reset your controller so it's not trying to talk to your PS4 because then it won't want to talk to your PC at all. And on the back here on the right side when you're looking at the back is a little hole underneath the light bar and inside of there is a button to reset your controller. Just take your safety pin, pop it in there and you should feel a button get pressed and hold that there for around 10 seconds so that the controller is fully reset. If there's a light on the back, you'll know you pressed it because it'll go out. And then after you've counted to 10, just take the safety pin out and your controller is ready for the next step. Then on your PC, open up your settings panel and you should be able to find a connected devices, Bluetooth devices button. And that'll take you to Bluetooth and other devices along with your printer and other stuff. But we just want the Bluetooth devices. And here at the top of this little window, you'll see the Bluetooth is on, make sure it's on to start out with, and then click on the plus button, uh, yeah. and then click on the plus symbol at the top. This will open a pop-up window to add a device. We then want to press Bluetooth at the top. And this will start searching for devices that your computer can connect to. So to get it so that it finds your controller, we're going to press the PlayStation button and the share button simultaneously. So just press those and those should click on and your controller should start to flash. Once it flashes, it's discoverable, which means it'll show up on your computer. And there on the screen, you can see it popped up wireless controller input. Just click on it. It should automatically pair from here and then you're all done. So now we just need to set it up with some type of driver so it'll actually behave itself when we plug it into a game. In this case, you have two options. Well, three actually. The one I'm going to show you today is DS4 Windows, and if you have Steam, Steam's got built-in drivers, so you just plug it in and go. So let's do that next. All right, now once we've got our controller paired, we need to hook it up to some kind of driver. Now the first program that I'm going to show you is called DS4 Windows, and this is a program that's been running around for a while. There are two versions of it. There's the old version, that we don't want to use anymore, and then there is the newer version. The version that you want to find is the one listed under Ryochan, R-Y-O-Chan 7, and it should be available on GitHub. Once you click on the page, you'll be greeted with a little website that kind of explains to you what everything that this driver can do. Essentially what it's doing is it's convincing your computer that your PS4 controller is actually a Xbox controller, because Sony never really released a standalone driver for this bad boy. So once you're ready, go ahead and click on the big green download now button at the top, and this will take you to the GitHub repository where this thing is actively updated. And at the time of me making this video, this was updated 18 days ago. So find the version that you want. I would recommend for most modern computers, you want the X64 version, the 64-bit version, and just go ahead and grab the zip version. You can also grab a 7-zip version. It's a little bit smaller, but I don't really think that matters to most people. And then once you get it onto your computer, go ahead and extract it to the folder where you want it to be stored. Once you extract it to your computer, you're going to want to go ahead and open it, and you should find a little controller icon. Once you go into a couple folders, that's kind of rainbowy colored with a little Windows logo in it. Go ahead and click on that. That's the main program, and it just kind of runs out of this folder. Now, once you open it, you may be asked to install a .NET framework. If you do, that means that you don't already have the version of the .NET framework that it specifically wants. Go ahead and click yes, that you want to go ahead and install that in the little pop-up, and it'll take you to Microsoft's website where you can download this software. This is official development framework software, so it's nothing you need to worry about. So just download that, run on your computer, it'll only take a moment, and then you can proceed to the next step. Once that's installed, you're going to want to double-click on DS4 Windows again. This will avoid that other pop-up, but you'll get another question. 
This time it's going to ask you, where do you want it to install its settings? Now, if you want to take this program and run it from a USB drive or move it between computers, I would recommend running it from the folder and storing all of your settings in the folder. If you don't care, just let it save to your app data folder. That's where a lot of other games and stuff save their stuff. It's not really a big deal. It'll overwrite it if you install a newer version of it anyway. So it, again, it's just your personal preference. After that, a little window that should pop up and it'll walk you through the next setup steps. If this is your first time installing it, you're gonna wanna run through the different steps. The first step is there's actually a secondary gamepad driver that you'll want to install. Go ahead and click on the yes, go ahead, install that button, and it'll run through the process, install it really quick, and it'll be done. And after that, it'll also see if your computer has the most recent drivers for the Xbox controller on it. This program actually requires you to run Windows 10 now. So this is a little bit of the outdated version from the previous version of this driver that was created by a different developer. If you're running a Windows 7 and this thing's working fine, that's amazing and you need to update the drivers, go ahead and just click yes, download those updated Windows 7 drivers for the Xbox controller, let's do it. And then after that, that should be pretty much it. There might be one more installation on the three-step list that you need to do. Otherwise, just click OK, close out of DS4 Windows, and then relaunch it. With all of your drivers installed, it should now show all of the stuff that you need in order to play and use your PS4 controller on your PC. Which, in this case, it'll just show your device is connected, in this case, your controller, and then you can click on it, you can change settings like I want it to be blue color or I want it to be a red color. This is kind of handy if you install more than one PS4 controller on your computer. Then you can tell, you know, player one versus player two versus player three. And this is an actually pretty robust program these days. You have the ability to set up different settings, profiles, or presets so that you can make it so that it works well for your desktop, it works well for this game, or you completely change the controller layout for this game. And if you ever need to change or manually adjust any of the buttons because something's being weird on your computer, because that happens, this is a free open source software, they can't test every configuration, you can hover over the different buttons on the map and then you can click on them to rebind them to something else, if you need. And if you find yourself wanting to use this program a lot to run your games, you can even go into the settings and you can set it up so that DS4 Windows will launch whenever you launch Windows. So you restart, it'll restart with Windows, and it'll be sitting there ready to use so that you can just get to gaming and you don't have to like manually go find the folder and click on the driver again. So this should work out of the box. Uh, if not, you can go into your presets section and you can do one of two things. You can manually just start a blank clean slate and fill out all of the buttons one by one by clicking on them on the visible map, or you can start a new profile and use one of their existing presets, which seem to work really nicely. So you can use those as a base and then you can adjust them based upon how you like to run your settings. If you like to have your touchpad, you know, right click, left click, like it's a mouse, or if you wanted to do something else, you have the ability to customize this however you want. So that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you use DS4 Windows to connect it via Bluetooth to your computer. This will also work if you just plug in your game's controller. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.